I'd like to start out talking about the Center for Sacred Studies. It's an organization that I've been involved in, with for about 10 years and did a lot of personal inner, inner work. And the organization was founded by a woman named Jo T. And they honor all ways of prayer. And they are particularly interested in protecting indigenous ways of prayer, which is really the, um, you know, it's a global tradition, indigenous prayer. And Jyoti had a vision, I think, believe it was a 2003, where um, the Divine Mother appeared to her and gave her this vision, this prayer of a council of elders of women and Jyoti put this prayer in motion and little by little the community started to give her connections about uh, indigenous elders and in 2004 the f a council of 13 international an international council of 13 indigenous grandmothers met in the Catskills for the first time and Many of these women um, had been told stories or had dreams uh, a long time ago that someday they would sit on a grandmother's council. And because of my involvement with the Center for Sacred Studies, uh, I volunteered to help with the grandmother's council. And I was assigned to work with the Lakota grandmothers. And for me, it was a great blessing because I had met other Lakota teachers for a few years beforehand. So it was a great blending of things and I want to hold up a picture of the grandmothers this is the International Council of 13 indigenous grandmothers this is grandmother Clara who has Japanese ancestry but she lives in Brazil and she's studying um, sacred medicine plants in a spiritual community there this is um, grandmother uh, Marie who was from Chile originally and she had been um, a political prisoner was tortured and did a brief exile in Africa and now is back living in Brazil also doing she has a, a plant um, research institute. This is grandmother Margaret who's from Montana, Lame Deer, Montana. She returned to her tribe with a master's degree in social work and is trying to help her people. This is grandmother Rita from Arctic Alaska and when she was nine years old she's now in her 70s. When she was nine years old, her grandmother gave her 13 eagle feathers and 13 stones and said, someday you will sit on a grandmother's council. And at the first grandmother's council in 2004, she now sat in a circle of all these other elders and gifted those eagle feathers and stones to the other grandmothers. This is grandmother Beatrice, long visitor, holy dance, and I was her assistant. She's an elder in the Native American church. And this is her sister Rita that grew up together. So there are two Lakota sisters on the council. This is grandmother Bernadette who's from Gabon, Africa. Um, she is an advisor to the president of her country. She's also a, a spiritual leader. This is grandmother Mona who's Hopi Tiwa. And she is um, working on her PhD in um, criminal justice. And she told us a story when she was 14 years old. Um, she went to Alcatraz when the Native Americans were first doing their um, political activism and bringing light to their situation. This is Grandmother Julieta, who's from Mexico. She um, does healing work and doctoring. This is Grandmother Agnes Pilgrim Baker, who is from the Northwest Coast. She's the oldest living member of her tribe. I believe she's 83. And she's the keeper of the salmon ceremony. She's the, the elder of the elders council. This is grandmother Flora Del Mayo, who is Mayan. Uh, she also has her own institute in New Mexico now where she does um, um, healing work. This is grandmother Ama who's from Nepal, and her father was a shaman. And it's very unusual for, almost unheard of for women 
to be shamans in her culture, but she took on her father's lineage and she's a very powerful healer. And this is Grandmother Sering, who is a Tibetan refugee. She came over the Himalayas when she was uh, younger with her family and now she lives in Toronto and she founded um, um, safe places for women and clinics in, in India for refugees. So the grandmothers met for the first time in 2004 and every six months they uh, the goal is for them to visit each other's homeland and they all do ceremonies of their own traditions and typically uh, when the conference is underway one gra grandmother would do a sunrise ceremony one would do an afternoon ceremony and another one a, a, an evening ceremony um, in October of last year they had an audience with the Dalai Lama and this October 2007 they are partnering with the Bioneers in California because their teachings are about the interrelationship of all things about the water the sacred medicine plants, the land, and the Bioneers are an environmental ecological group that's been trying to do this kind of work for years. So they're real excited about this partnership. Um, there's a book out about the grandmothers called The Grandmothers Council of the World, and in here is a biography of each of the grandmothers and also the other um, Western women who were at the first council, which was also the Global Women's Conference, and that included Alice Walker and Cara Mosey Braun and um, Gloria Steinem and several others. So this book has biographies of all the grandmothers plus information in the back that talks about the prophecies of many of the grandmothers' cultures when they met. Um, at the conferences, they would have a particular session that was devoted specifically to the prophecies. The Lakota grandmothers talked about the white buffalo calf woman. Um, and the white buffalo calf woman came to the Lakota people as a sacred being 19 generations ago, gave the Lakota people their ceremonies and gifted them with the sacred pipe and said that she would return in in when the people were in time of need. And several years ago, uh, a white buffalo calf was born and they tested it to make sure it wasn't an albino. And this caused great stirring among the native people who came to honor this animal, this sacred animal. And since then, there's been quite a few other white buffaloes that have been born and they've all been greeted with great um, reverence and delight. Grandmother Flora del Mayo is Mayan, and her culture has a very, very strong um, prophecy tradition. And she shares um, teachings about the Mayan calendar and how we are heading towards the 2012 date where the Mayan calendar comes to a conclusion and no one quite knows what's going to happen after that. Some say it's an opportunity for complete physical and spiritual transformation. And that's what the prayer is of many of the people. The grandmother's mission is for raising awareness about the environment and how our culture predominantly is off track and is, is just abusing the earth and abusing the resources and how water is the first medicine Water is used in all the ceremonies and there is so much water pollution and we don't respect water and water is life. In the South Dakota area, there's also some activity going on about possible renewal of uranium mining and the Pine Ridge Reservation sits on top of the largest freshwater aquifer in the Western Hemisphere. And uranium mining was done 30 years ago, and there are 85 contaminated wells on the reservation, and there are cancers and birth defects. So to start up uranium mining again at the risk of damaging that aquifer is not only for the native people that live there, but all the farmers and ranchers who live around that area, and for North America and the planet itself. 
There's also some uranium um, activity going on in Canada, and people are um, protesting against that because it's very dangerous. And unfortunately, the application for uranium eventually winds up with military um, applications. Thank you.